This video is sponsored by DungeonCraft. DungeonCraft currently has a Kickstarter going on for their cutout map pieces for use with tabletop RPGs. Trees, tents, buildings, rivers, literally a thousand plus different reversible terrain pieces. Set up a quick campsite or dungeon using these one inch grid tiles that are easily cut out. The goal is to decrease time drawing your maps and keep the game going. Flip over that roof building to see an interior for your players to explore. Trees can change seasons or dungeon rooms fill with gold. Their Kickstarter is funded and they're currently going for their second stretch goal. Check out Dungeon Craft today by clicking the link in the description. Thanks again, Dungeon Craft. Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. I love the Land of Fate, which is Zakara and the al Qadim setting. I'm guessing this will be a series of videos on the lore and history of Zakara, but I don't plan that far in advance with my videos, so we'll see how many this turns out to be. I do love the setting though, particularly because of its Arabian themes and I love that mythology. Powerful jinn, deserts, evil viziers. Maybe this all has to do with my love affair with Disney's Aladdin. Let's dive in southeast into the Land of Fate and discover what makes it tick. Zakara is part of the Forgotten Realms. It is on Turil, just another continent. It's separated from Faerun by a large ocean and the World Pillar Mountains. These mountains form the greatest barrier to enter Zakara, keeping the area isolated. Currently controlled by Yakmen, it is a dangerous place to navigate through. The humans here speak a common language of Midani. Not unknown to Faerun, in ancient past, people from Zakara known as the Kalashites traveled to Faerun via portals, which is where we get the nation of Kalamshan. Powerful genies brought them there as slaves until the Kalashites rebelled against their captors. You can find out more about Kalamshan from my other video in the top right corner or in the description below. Navigating by land is dangerous because of the World Pillar Mountains, but the sea isn't much better. The oceans are plagued with pirates and corsairs who plunder ships that they can find. Attempting to sail from Faerun to Zakara, there is a strong chance that if the dangerous ocean events or weather don't get you, the pirates will. The Land of Fate is surrounded by three major seas. The Great Sea, stretching to the north and west, separating Zakara and Faerun. To the east, there is the Sea of Foreigners, which led to the distant lands of Karator. And finally, to the south was the Crowded Sea. This sea was home to a collection of islands, some inhabited and some not, many undiscovered. Zakara is home to huge deserts and powerful genies. Genies seem to take a particular interest in Zakara, and when visiting the Prime Material Plane, often appear in the Land of Fate. In Zakara, people often talk about the Enlightened. There are a great many monsters and creatures within the Land of Fate, but those civilized and willing to work and or trade are considered the Enlightened. The common language Madani and Zakara culture are common between the Enlightened races. Elves, dwarves, and humans all make their home in Zakara. Unlike Faerun, which has no continent system of government, Zakara itself is ruled by the Grand Caliph in Hazuz, the City of Delights. Also known as the Shining City, it is the capital of Zakara and its greatest city. Although there are other rulers in other cities, they are all governed by Hazuz and its Grand Caliph. It was here in Hazuz that the Enlightenment began. You see, the first Grand Caliph had a vision of the Lore Giver. The Lore Giver, also called the Handmaiden of Fate or the Maiden of Beauty, was once a young girl that Fate had chosen to bestow its knowledge to. She used this knowledge to write sacred scrolls that would become the basis for law in Zakara. The scrolls were hidden within a cave because the people of Zakara were not yet ready for such wisdom, the wisdom of fate. Centuries later, the lore giver bestowed the information of their location to the Grand Caliph, who used the scrolls as a basis for all law within Zakara. It brought civilization and culture to the races of Zakara. There are many gods in Zakaran society, but everyone, and I do mean everyone, respects and follows the idea of fate. It was fate that changed the entire continent into what it is today. It was fate that united all the lands of Zakara under one banner of enlightenment. And this occurred around 800 DR. With later editions of D&D, we don't have updated information for Zakara or al -Qadim. So I don't have current information. For the sake of my research, the latest date was 1367, which is a ways behind the current year of Forgotten Realms of 1491. So just know that when I speak of people or locations, they might have changed or passed on because of outdated information. As of 1367, the current Grand Caliph was Khalil al-Assad al-Zahir, the 18th wearer of this title and direct descendant of the first Grand Caliph. One can hope that Wizards of the Coast will bring attention to this setting again with a source book for 5th edition. The Grand Caliph rules Zakara through local potentates, with Hazuz being the location of his personal domain. He governs with a large group of trusted advisors known as the Court of Enlightenment. The city of Hazuz is famously home to the Gold Mosque, the largest and most impressive temple in the Land of Fate. 
It is unique in that it is not dedicated to one god, but all enlightened gods. The Grand Caliph often comes to the temple to pray and be seen as a religious man to the people. Its pillars and walls are overlaid with gold, and even the tile work is laced with gold. It rises 90 feet above the street, and its central dome, also golden, has four tall minarets that rise above any other buildings in Hazuz. There is a garden behind the mosque which surrounds the original house of the Lorgiver. Within the temple are depictions of the enlightened gods, and no doors can be found, only large inviting archways. It is so huge, roughly 5,000 people can worship at once. The house of the Lorgiver is a building said to be the original home of she who became the Lorgiver. There is some contention whether or not this is the actual home of the Lorgiver, or just a home that existed when the Lorgiver was alive. Regardless, almost everyone agrees that this is the site where the first Grand Caliph received the vision that led to the sacred scrolls. The house isn't very impressive, a one-story, one-room house with walls and a foundation of clay, yet it is a holy place for many Zakharans. The House of the Lorgiver is surrounded by numerous magical protections and is guarded by eight priests at all times, although they are not necessary because anyone who approaches more than 10 feet of the house finds a wall of force has sprung up to stop them. If you dispel this wall of force, another magical effect takes place, an overwhelming feeling of dread, hopefully frightening the defiler out of the sacred location. If this is resisted, there are four noble genies of each element that appear to defend the house. Finally, anyone who can get past all of this and touch the house is instantly paralyzed. No saving throw. Special thanks to our sponsor for this video, Dungeon Craft. Be sure to check out their Kickstarter by clicking the link in the description below. I hope to have more Zakara videos in the near future, so stay tuned. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing these videos with your gaming group. I'll see you all next week with another video.